In today's A-level IB video, we're going to look at diffusion. Now, we'll start with our simple definition of diffusion, which you probably met at GCSE and IGCSE, and then we'll be talking about it in terms of facilitated diffusion and the role of protein channels and carrier proteins. Now, let's start with our definition of diffusion, and this is simple diffusion. It is the net movement of molecules or ions from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. And really, our last point is to say that this occurs until the molecules or ions are evenly distributed. Now we say that this is a natural or passive process, so we don't need an external input of energy from ATP. But where does this inherent energy come from in the ions and molecules? In some specifications, GCSE and IGCSE physics went into this a little bit, and it was called Brownian motion. And don't worry too much, we're not getting super scientific, but we're basically saying that all particles are inherently in motion due to the kinetic energy they possess, and that this motion is random, and that the particles constantly bounce off of each other. And that's really what Brownian motion stated. So we'll write a quick summary here. So all particles move randomly. All particles move constantly due to the kinetic energy they possess. And lastly, all particles bounce off each other and the sides of the vessel they are contained within. Now, in biology, there are various examples of diffusion occurring naturally. That will include oxygen and carbon dioxide moving across membranes. However, many other substances do not pass readily through cell surface membranes and so we need to use a different type of diffusion to aid their movement. So just to make a note here that diffusion occurs with oxygen and carbon dioxide across cell membranes. Now looking at facilitated diffusion, so we recall that plasma membranes are not readily permeable to molecules and only small non-polar molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide can diffuse across. Charged ions and polar molecules do not diffuse readily, and that's because of the hydrophobic nature of the phospholipid tails. So we must write a little explanation here, which is that polar molecules and charged ions do not readily cross the cell surface membrane. Due to the water heating, hydrophobic nature of the fatty acid tails of the phospholipid bilayer. So we're really talking about the cell surface membrane, remember you have this phospholipid bilayer, so two layers of phospholipids with the hydrophilic heads and then the inwardly facing hydrophobic tails. So how can we move these polar molecules and charged ions across? Well we need to use transmembrane channels and carriers and that's why we describe this process as being facilitated diffusion. Notice that it's still a passive process. We don't require an external input of ATP. So our next points are that facilitated diffusion uses transmembranes, so channels which cross the membrane. It's a passive process, so it doesn't require ATP. And therefore, it occurs down the concentration gradient, so from high to low concentration. Now, we're going to talk in great detail now about these transmembrane channels, and they are subdivided into two categories. Number one, protein channels. Number two, carrier proteins. 
So we'll start with the first mechanism, which is for protein channels. Now notice these are water-filled hydrophilic channels, so water-loving channels, and therefore they'll allow specific water-soluble ions to cross. Notice that they're selective, they only open in the presence of a specific ion. If the ion isn't present, they'll remain closed. Next up, the ions bind with the protein, causing it to change shape. So how about carrier proteins? Now carrier proteins help molecules such as glucose to cross the membrane. The molecule itself causes the carrier protein to change shape and that results in that molecule being released into the cell.